Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. Uh, just mounted up this brand new 2024 Armada ARV94 yesterday. Had this Armada branded STH kind of kicking around. Thought it was a nice match. Um, and this is a really exciting story. I'm not gonna get into the technical details right now, but there's some new sidewall technology in these skis that is supposed to make them like the most durable park ski ever. So today is day one on these things. Oh, nice 360 there. Look at that, those guys are having fun. I missed that. Um, yeah, day one on these things. We've got some rails down here. These will be my first ever rail slides on this ski. And my plan is to log, I don't know, like a thousand more before I talk to you next. So I will meet you back in the studio and we'll talk more about these skis, but in between now and then, yeah, we're looking for a thousand rail slides. Good goal. <laughs> <laughs> At the bottom. <laughs> That's so cool. How many was that? Five? I love things like that. Long multi kink boxes. You can do like endless tricks on that. You count the mushrooms? Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from skiessentials.com. I'm Emily. Uh, first thing we should address is it's been a while since we filmed that intro. I don't think I slid a thousand rails. Mm. I really was trying hard. I had a, a few nagging injuries. You were there to I witness was. some of those injuries. I was a witness. Um, and I just, I don't know if I got there, but I do think I slid plenty of rails to assess these skis durability. Um, so we will talk about that towards the end of the video. Before we get into any of that stuff, brand new ARV and ARW line for 2024. When I say that, it's maybe not exactly true because some of the skis do stay the same, but we do have three really important new models. So basically the previous generation, 2023 skis and, and back beyond that, went 84, 86, 96, 106, 116, JJ, whatever. Um, basically that 86, 96 and 106, or actually 86 and 96 has been expanded into 88, 94, and 100. Mm. So we have basically one additional ski in the ARV, ARW line. This is the 94 here that we're gonna talk about today. That's the ARW 94, and it's a really cool story. New construction here, new shape, um, and I think the performance is, is awesome across the board. I think it's like one of those things where they have made objective improvements compared to the previous generation, which is right here. I agree. There's pretty sweet. Yeah. So talk about construction first. Um, really a wholesale change here. These skis were built using poplar and ash. Now in these new skis, we've got a Karuba wood core and an ash binding insert. Um, so basically the ash is kind of there for better binding retention, maybe a little stronger feel underfoot. Yep. Um, it does bring the weight down quite a bit, which we'll touch on in just a second here. Um, but kind of the big story, which I was alluding to in that intro, is wedge wall. Mm. So wedge wall is an exciting new concept where they basically have a 3D injected molded sidewall that's kind of like triangular. Yeah, angled so if, in. Yeah, mm -hmm. so if you think about a traditional sidewall and a traditional wood core, you've basically got kind of vertical or connection between yep. them. Um, so this new way of building the sidewall and the core is you have this angled sidewall that meets with an angled core. So during the molding process, 
It's actually pushing those things together. And then anytime you have an impact, it's also pushing them together. Mm -hmm. Pretty interesting concept. Absolutely. And if you kind of think about like endless rail impacts with a, a traditional sidewall, every single impact is pushing them apart. Mm. Where in this ski, every single impact is pushing them together. Together, brilliant. Yeah. It is brilliant, mm -hmm. and it's like really cool. I think we're in an awesome like stage or era of ski construction where like we're kind of figuring out these like small little details yeah. to make a big difference. Totally. So I mentioned weight. This ski here is 1,650 grams. That's a 178, 9,400 foot ski, which is pretty darn light. Mm -hmm. That's a full 200 grams less than basically the corresponding length in this ski, which was 177. So we've gone a little bit narrower, a little bit longer, and dropped 200 grams. It's awesome. It's pretty significant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously, your skis over there are a little bit lighter, mm -hmm. but same construction between men and women here. Yep. Um, and then looking at shape, uh, really, I should have actually, why don't you give me that pair there? Because mm -hmm. we didn't, I forgot to rubber band the brakes on that ski. Ah. Um, but still a freestyle rocker profile. Mm -hmm. So that's something that our model lists in their catalog, whether it's like a free ride or freestyle rocker profile. The freestyle rocker profiles are much more symmetrical. So that's about tip rocker length there. Lots and lots of camber underfoot. And then about equal tail length or tail rocker mm -hmm. length. I don't think it's quite as long back there um, because the mount point, the freestyle mount point is actually two centimeters back from true center. So I measured that on mine just before we started filming here. Um, the, there is a factory recommended point that's more like four and a half centimeters back from true center. But yeah, the fact that it's that the freestyle line's not true center is kind of reflective of that, the difference between tip yeah. and tail rocker length. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. the center of camber is a little bit further back. Mm -hmm. You can have those skis back, okay. Emily. Um, and the last thing I want to look at for shape here is the amount of taper that they have. So that's kind of a big change too. You know, I think that wedge wall is huge. I think switching to Karuba is huge. Um, and I think this change in taper shape is, I don't know, to me it's equally as important. You can kind of see in this ski, the widest point of the ski is further extended towards the tip. In this ski, they've brought it back towards the middle of the ski in both the tip and the tail. Mm -hmm. Not only do I think that helps as an all-mountain ski, I think it helps as a park ski too. Yeah. I just think it's more of like a modern shape. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's it for construction and shape updates. Yeah. Uh, maybe the last thing that I'd point out is I do think the new ski is slightly softer. Mm -hmm. This ski... So it kind of makes sense. This ski is denser wood in here, heavier. And then in this new ARV 94, <clears throat> just oh, a yeah. little bit more, especially right in the tips and tails, yeah. you get a nice little, just more a natural even, flex seems. pattern. Yeah. yeah. And I think it, you can feel that when you're skiing it too. Yeah. So moving right into performance now, um, not that when I ski these, Am I thinking like, let's go ski some groomers? No. But I think it's a reasonable place to start anyways. Mm -hmm. um, so just skiing around on groomers, Emily, what do you think? I mean, in general, I've been really excited to talk about these skis. I think they were by far one of my favorites from this winter. Yep. Um, and I've always been a big fan of Armada, given my free ride, freestyle background. Sure. Um, and they just put out a lot of really fun skis, a lot of cool graphics. Um, so I think what they did with this iteration of the ARW is really impressive. Yeah. And jumping right into just performance, I mean, like you said, you don't grab these skis and go right to a groomer. Yeah. I th like every time I get on it, I either want to like ski in the trees or yeah. ski in the park. Right. But I still think starting with groomer performance is like a good entry into the performance conversation. Absolutely. And I think we were really fortunate the day that we tested these because... If I recall, it was a sweet day. I mean, yeah, we like had, the the media shoot day. Yeah, yeah, we had, and I'm, you know, we've each of us have taken them out I'm on lucky. additional I've, days. I've skied that thing probably forty days. <laughs> I'm not as lucky to say that, but I'm focusing on just the media day because that was yeah, my true totally. day to really 
you know, put them to the test. Yeah. And we, I was able to take them onto a lot of different snow conditions and terrain yep. to get the full scope. And so the first run that we did, we went to the groomer. And I was really impressed with how stable they were on groomers. I yep. mean, carving on the, the groomer, I was a little hesitant given how light they are. Certainly wasn't expecting the performance out of them. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. And that's something that Armada actually puts in their catalog mm -hmm. in reference to wedge wall. Right. So they've made the ski lighter. It's also softer flexing as we just looked at. Yep. But one of the benefits that they list of wedge wall is increased edge grip. Absolutely. So I thought that was interesting because if you're skiing them in a straight line, I think it's fair to say that these skis and that ARW96 yeah. that you have over there have more like longitudinal stability. Yeah. But the edge grip is about equal between them. Mm -hmm. And then when you, when you do that, when you have good edge grip but a ski that can bend more yeah. then you get like you have that ability to kind of like manipulate turn shape yeah. and make different radius carves mm -hmm. and stuff like that and it's you know it's fun without going really fast mm -hmm. and i think it has all of those characteristics which i think is really cool yeah and just speaking to that i know you already touched on the construction and just the the use of wood but i think it's pretty noticeable the difference between the Karuba and then the um, yeah. Poplar and Ash in the previous model. Snappy. Snappy, just a really soft, playful flex that you can really press into and yep. and like butter and press and, and just just play around on. Yep. Um, and then given that lightweight, just the use of the wedge wall technology really evened it out and gave it really good stability and edge grip. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like I said, I don't think like ripping groomers is the intention of this ski. I, like that's obviously not because they've got like reliance 92 ti yeah. or, or for me declivity 92 ti which is very similar yeah. width and that ski is more directional there's metal in it etc etc yeah et cetera. it's not its intended use yeah but it just speaks to its versatility yeah so if you're just you know ripping around the mountain you can make some carving turns and it's super fun mm -hmm. i also think like it's really easy to release the edge and mm -hmm. like whether you're making short skidded turns yep. or whether you're kind of slipping and smearing from forward to switch and, mm -hmm. and back again. Yeah. I think it does that really well on a groomer. I think that edge release, that characteristic, for me, it, it certainly helps me when you start going off piste mm. and into softer snow. You, like, you were ripping on those <laughs> skis in the woods, which was really cool to yeah. see. And then Megan, who has kind of more of a racing background, yeah. like she loved them too. Oh yeah, so we I both thought agreed. the the off piste ability of these skis, even with more of a center mount, yeah. is like really impressive. And it just its ability to transition smoothly between snow conditions totally is really impressive. And that was kind of the day that I had that media day. It was like yeah. started on the groomer, transition into bumps and trees and. I mean, they were so fun, They're so, so fun. Yeah. lively and easy to maneuver yeah. and energetic. I mean, I like for bumps, they were ideal, like yeah. really quick. And uh, I know in the preview for this review, it was mentioned that I was in hover mode. Yeah. Which that day, yeah, a lot of the, the shots of me, I'm just... Yeah, there's like 10 pictures. You're not touching <laughs> the ground. It's awesome. I'm off the ground, which just represents the nature and the personality 100%. of the ski. They're just, yeah. they just want to, I mean, I just wanted to jump and bounce and play off everything. Yeah. Um, so yeah, bumps, they're awesome. Trees, they were super fun and just, just lively and snappy. Yeah. They're playful, they're yeah. intuitive. I think it, they're, it's probably worth bringing up that it is not a directional ski. No. And you and I both have a lot of experience on yeah. more center mounted skis. Yeah. So there might be a situation here where a 100% directional skier who's not used to twin tips would feel like they have a lot of ski behind them. Yeah. But I don't know because the way that they've kind of worked with this rocker and taper shape, mm -hmm. it just like, it never feels catchy. No. Which like that's hard to achieve when you build a ski yeah. and make it this symmetrical. Absolutely. So pretty cool. Yeah. Very. Like, it's definitely... You know, it's not a powder ski, but it's got kind of that modern style of mm -hmm. skiing powder. Mm -hmm. Like, people that are buying this 
a lot of them are going to be kids. Mm -hmm. Kind of a lot of the like style and mentality is a lot of like slashing, yeah. and, like really aggressive, quick yep. turns, uh, not round turns mm -hmm. by any means. And I think it does that really well. Like it allows there you to kind of do those flick smear mm -hmm. slash turns, which mm -hmm. is super super fun. Um, yeah. I, I, I could keep going. I know. Like it's, they're, they're really fun off piste. It's obviously, it's something that's more enhanced with the 100. Yeah. And I, I am excited to talk about that ski too. I thought this 94 was a great one to start with because it kind of sits right in the middle. But yeah, you know, if you're like out west or something like that and, you, and you're kind of looking for that versatility and you will be skiing a lot of soft snow, the 100 yeah. might be better. Um, <clears throat> along the same lines, the 88, the new 88 is like hands down the best park ski, which mm. we can get to in a little bit. But the way that this 94 <clears throat> achieves just a tremendous amount of versatility and still being really good in the soft snow is commendable. Yeah, and, and that day <clears throat> I had the chance to kind of swap between the 100 and this yeah. one. And yeah, you can feel a difference. But you can they, definitely they feel a difference. Work. And I kind of given what we were skiing and just the winter that we were having, um, I kept coming back to this one because it just yep. felt like more applicable and just really versatile for all mountain. Yep. Um, so there's a lot to be said about what they've done to, to achieve that and totally how it can really <clears throat> ski everything and be super fun. I mean, we went under the, the chair there on Spruce and yep. kind of skied some, some exposure and some drops and they just felt like they were you know, like myself and the skis were one and the same. We were just... Yeah, extremely intuitive. Totally. And I think that's like, that's such a cool thing yeah. about them. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, they're not, they might not be like the strongest skis for just char straight lining, right. like big mountain terrain or no, something not like that, but they're not trying to be that either. And they're just, yeah, they're just incredibly intuitive. Yep. I thought they were, they were so much fun over in that spruce terrain. I actually was like selfishly bummed when we went <laughs> over there. Not really, because I was I was skiing the 88 when yep. we went and skied yep. that stuff that you're kind of referring to right now. So I I will admit that when we were over there, I was like, oh, I'd really like to be on the 94. And like I should point out that this is not a demo binding. This is an STH 13 mm. that was mounted to my boots. Like these are more my skis yeah. than than not. In fact, they're 100 percent my skis. <laughs> In fact, it sounds like they are your skis. Um, so. Yeah, I kind of wished that I had been on the 94 over there, but 88 still did fine, which yeah. I think is testament to the whole the whole story here. Yep. Like if I can ski stuff like that on the 88, like it's pretty cool and pretty yeah. representative of their off-piste, off-trail capabilities. Yeah. Um, finish with park. Mm -hmm. I think that's fair. Um, I skied a lot of park skis this year. Thanks to all the ski manufacturers for making new park skis because it was super fun to test. Uh, I don't use words like this very often, but if you're speaking specifically about park application, this was the favorite, my favorite thing that I skied all year. Awesome. Yeah. That says a lot. It, it, yeah, it does. I'm not, I don't want to take away from other skis. There were other skis that were awesome too. Yeah. Um, maybe like particularly call out those new Elan Playmakers. I was going to Playmaker 91 thing is really, really yeah. good in the park for very, very similar reasons. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I think it might just be the word Armada. Probably. You know, like, yeah. think back to when we were in college oh, and, yeah. like, Armada was the brand. The brand. So when I'm given an Armada ARV, like, my mentality. It brings you back to your, like, yeah, yeah, roots. I'm like, I'm going to go ski some park. Yeah. And I, I felt like I skied better on this ski than than anything else that yeah. I skied all year. And I think there's something to that. You know, all these changes that they've made, all the improvements that we've talked about, it's hard for me to not think that they're like most noticeable in the park. Because mm -hmm. every, like if you think about every single change to this ski, like starting with swing weight, mm -hmm. like yeah. that's a big thing. Dropping mm -hmm. 200 grams out of a ski is huge. Yeah. So you notice it right away, whether you're sliding rails or like spinning onto rails or, mm -hmm. or jumping too. Like sometimes I think you can go too light on jumps with a ski, but this is certainly not too light. Yeah. And you just, you immediately notice that lighter swing weight and the ski feels super easy. You immediately notice the change in the rocker taper shape. 
like the ski is so smooth mm -hmm. on takeoffs. I like am it's harder and harder for me to like justify doing big switch spins. Mm -hmm. But the few times I took off switch on this ski on jumps, I was like, ah, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Like I'm so glad that this shape is here because I don't I don't think that the tip is gonna catch. Catch, yeah, yeah. Which to me is like one of the worst feelings totally. on skis. Not what you want. And then lastly, this wedge wall thing with the increased durability, so you can like that's yeah. a that's a lot of rail marks. Yeah. Right? Can yeah. we just say that like And it looks it's in, in great shape. Like that's probably more rail slides than most people are gonna do in at least a full year, yeah. if not like two or three seasons. And it's pretty wild. Like it's it's really hard for me to ski something in the park this much without mm -hmm. cracking an edge. Yeah. And then once you crack an edge, you're just you're playing a lose. You're you're fighting a losing yeah. battle. Yeah. You're like it's not a fun game anymore. You're no. like you have to be so careful with your skis and bring them inside. Don't yeah. let them like. Moisture. Freeze yeah. exactly. Like you have to like go through this. Like okay, are my skis dry before yeah. I can even bring them outside again? Because then they'll freeze and split. Yeah, you're paranoid. And, and yep. Like it's just really cool to be able to ski something this hard and not worry about about durability. So, you know, I set out in this review and mm -hmm. in this kind of journey through this ski to really, really test the durability. And I did, I had these visions of like, I'm gonna go hike a rail for like four hours <laughs> and just disaster it every time. And I didn't do that, but I do feel like I did enough that yeah. like there is something there that is like pretty much physical proof that, yeah. that there's, there's something here. And other manufacturers are doing similar things too. You know, when we like look at the, those playmakers that I was talking about and how the top sheets beveled, I don't remember the technology that they're, or the, the phrase that they're using to describe that, mm -hmm. but that there's a, that's for a similar reason. Yep. They're basically like dissipating these forces and here they're doing it with how the core actually interacts with that sidewall. Yeah. In other skis, they're doing it with how it's shaped and mm -hmm. like how the impact is dispersed, but. Different approaches. But no, and I, I just, I love it. I yeah. love that like manufacturers are starting to figure this out instead of like, oh, yep, sorry. Yeah. You slid rails and you weren't supposed to do that. Yeah. Like, it, it's just cool that our company is saying like, no, these are really durable. Yeah. So. You can invest in them and, and have confidence that they'll hold yeah. up. Yeah. So I'm quite impressed. Mm-hmm. I think I like. I think you're gonna see a lot of these things. Everywhere. Like I said, it was definitely one of my favorites from this winter, and I've yeah. skied a lot of skis. And yeah. I, I plan to have this ski, you know, in my rotation, just yeah. because it's for how I like to ski and what I ski on a regular basis. They're just they're kind of ideal. Yeah. Yeah. And I again, the, like, kind of bring Megan back yeah. up, like with like. She was a Noram ski racer. Yeah. Like she doesn't. She doesn't even know what this is. <laughs> like she has. She like. Sorry, Megan. I know. I was like, wait. We love you, <laughs> she Megan. She won't watch this. It's fine. <laughs> um, she I, like she had basically never skied a wood core, a simple wood core twin yeah. tip, and she skied, got on these, and was like, "That's what I don't have. Like Normally, that's what I yeah, want." Normally, yeah, she wouldn't be drawn to this. Type not of not ski. at all. And then and no. similar skiers like herself wouldn't yeah. either. And speaking to that, like then there's me and we are both we have different backgrounds yeah and we're different skiers but we both to this day keep coming back and saying yep that was one of my favorites yeah no they're so good yeah and bob really liked it too um i thought you were more appropriate to bring into this because you skied that yeah. thing a ton and yep i also like I, I can't remember if it was driving in this morning or something but i was I was thinking back to like i don't know how we've known each other for what 18 years or something yeah about like <laughs> If if you told twenty two year old Jeff that he'd be standing here with Emily, like <laughs> talking know. about the future cool. of Armada twin tips, like I probably wouldn't believe you. So no. I thought that was selfishly that this is kind of rewarding. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. That is really Look funny. Look at us. Look at us. Uh, go. Who would have who would have thought? <laughs> yeah. Um, so no, super fun. Just like objective improvements here. Hats yeah. off to Armada. Yeah. I think they've done a really good job. Um, definitely let us know if you have any questions, whether you want to um, ask Emily in particular or, or myself or Bob or anyone else. Happy to chat more about them.
I'm, I could talk about these skis for longer. So yeah. Happy no, to I'd, chat about them too. I'd like to yeah. talk about them longer and I'm going to go write about them right now so it works out. There you similar. go. So yeah, let us know if you have any questions and we will talk to you soon. Bye.